The level of fear that he inspired in others was insane. It didn't matter. He wanted to come in and kill you. Now, Michael Jordan and Reggie Miller having a go at it. These are the times that Michael Jordan disrespected NBA players. And Jordan's beef with his own teammate, Steve Kerr, got so violent, their own coach had to get involved. It was 1995, and Steve Kerr was playing in his first practice game with Jordan. For some reason, Coach Phil Jackson decided to have Jordan and Kerr guard each other. At this point, Jordan didn't know who Kerr was, so he had no respect for him. Jordan started talking trash, roughing Kerr up, and surprisingly, Kerr was talking trash right back. Now, if you know Jordan, that's not gonna slide. So he decided to make this practice physical. Jordan got the ball, drove to the basket, and hit Steve Kerr with a hard foul. Obviously, this frustrated Kerr. So on the very next play, he wanted to return the favor. Driving up the court, Kerr hit Jordan with an elbow right to the chest. And that is when Jordan lost it. He hauls off and hits me in the chest. And I just haul off and hit him right in the eye. This man literally gave his teammate a black eye. Not only that, but right when this happened, the entire team had to come and break the fight up. And then Phil Jackson had to kick Jordan out of practice. And if Jordan was willing to do that to his teammate, what the hell did he do to people he was up against? Well... In the 1996 NBA Finals, Michael Jordan destroyed Hall of Famer Gary Payton. The Bulls beat the Supersonics 4-2, and Jordan collected his fourth championship ring. But 25 years later, Gary Payton thinks Jordan beat him by luck. He was being interviewed for Jordan's documentary, The Last Dance. And in that interview, Gary has all types of wild takes. He talks about beating Jordan up, slowing him down, getting aggressive with him. I made it a point. I said, just tire him out. Tire the f*** out of him. You just got to tire him out. And if he had done that just a little bit earlier, they probably could have won the finals. Now, the beautiful thing is, with this documentary, Jordan got to see a clip of Gary talking about this. And his reaction became one of Michael Jordan's most iconic disrespectful moments. Hitting him and banging him and hitting him and banging him. It took a toll on Mike. It took a toll and then <laughs> I feel so resting him a little bit and then the, the, the series changed. And I wish I could have did it earlier. I don't know if the outcome would have been different, but it, it, it was a difference <laughs> and, and beating him down a little bit. This man doesn't even have to say a word. He can just laugh, and it's the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> but what happens when Michael Jordan disrespects one of the biggest trash talkers in NBA history, Kevin Garnett? Well, it was 1996, and Garnett's Wolves were facing Jordan's Bulls. With it being Garnett's rookie season, this game shouldn't have been close. But shockingly, they were only down by three points at halftime. Garnett and his teammate J.R. Ryder were having a great game. So, with Garnett feeling himself, he made the biggest mistake of his entire career. He decided to start talking trash. Garnett was telling J.R., keep killing Jordan out there that they were destroying him, that it was easy. But what he didn't realize was that Michael Jordan was standing right next to them and he could hear every word they were saying. And at that point, it was too late. Jordan came out at the second half and lit the Wolves up, completely destroying any hope they had at winning, going up by 21 points, with Jordan scoring damn near every basket. And with the clock winding down, Garnett was pulled out of the game. That is when Jordan walked by the Wolves bench. And he let Garnett know to never disrespect the GOAT again. Next thing you know, we over there like this. And Mike came down, okay, young fella, okay, okay, damn, young fella, damn, damn, y'all, 
Yo, damn, damn, yo, <laughs> Never talk shit to Mike ever again in life. Yeah, Garnett learned his lesson right then and there. But there's one NBA legend that doesn't give a damn who Michael Jordan is. I'm talking about Charles Barkley. The disrespect between Barkley and Jordan got so bad, it cost them their entire friendship. They met as rookies in 1984, and over the next few seasons, they grew to respect each other's game. And by 1992, they were best friends, going golfing together, grabbing drinks, puffing cigars. They were just having a good time. However, it didn't matter how friendly they were away from basketball, because when it came time to ball, they wanted to kill each other. During the 1993 finals, Jordan was willing to do anything to beat Charles Barkley. So right before game four, he decided to give Charles a $20,000 diamond earring. What a great friend, right? Well, Jordan later told his assistant coach why he really did that, saying, Charles won't get in my way the rest of the series. What's 20,000 to me? He thinks we're great friends. I hate that fat f Damn. Jordan's over here playing 4D chess. But the disrespect doesn't stop there. Even after Barkley's career was over, Jordan took every opportunity that he could to disrespect the poor guy. What we got you there, Michael, how are your ribs feeling, by the way? A uh, lot better, a lot better. And we've tried to get some answers out of Charles here. Maybe we'll reveal what you say. But... I'm just glad his little ribs are all right. He's been <laughs> whining about him for like two or three weeks now. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Charles. You you can forget. I'm still the boss. If you need a job, I about you to be quiet. <laughs> well, are we going to see this happen? Can you tell us anything tonight? <laughs> no, I can only tell you that I have a very good player coming to Washington D.C. and I may not need another. <laughs> I was going to say, and his name and his Wait. initial is are not CB. I tell you what, not CB. KB is KB. pretty good. <laughs> I appreciate that. No I'm problem. Not, I'm not sure I might even consider coming down until you up the ante. <laughs> <laughs> Stay at TNT. I think that's your best effort. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. No problem. Sheesh. That was disrespectful. But you want to know what else is disrespectful? Not dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. I put my heart into this. And when you don't subscribe, it cuts deep. So what are you doing? But anyways, the beef between Jordan and Barkley didn't stop there. Cause in 2005, it happened again. This time on the Oprah Winfrey show. Who's the wiser? <laughs> I know when to eat, when not to eat. <laughs> now you, you, you do say though that he is cheap. I've heard that. Oh my God. I say that, everybody says that. <laughs> You you're not. That. No, I, I don't think. See, you're dressed. Something. He's dressed too well to be cheap. Thank he you very much. He spends all his money on clothes. Oh, okay. But <laughs> well, when you say he's I cheap, hey, <laughs> oh, I, all I got was the cheap George stuff. <laughs> Is it true that you all still split the bill? That you wouldn't just say, "Let me take he care of it." He said that. No. You know, when you get in the line, like you have a lot of freeloading friends. Yeah. I don't want ever him to ever think that, that I'm just hanging. Yeah. 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 So no. we fight over the bill. But he is. Really I'm glad good. you brought up the motorcycle thing, because I hate that. I want you to know that. You do. I Has do. he gotten you on a motorcycle? Hell no. <laughs> you know. I'm I, sorry, the seat's not big enough. Yeah. <laughs> when you ride a motorcycle, you have to really be focused on seeing the traffic ahead. He doesn't know about this. He's never ridden a motorcycle. He never understands what it takes to be a winner. <laughs> <laughs> But then if I, if I get the rest of the guys laughing at him, yeah. he'll always bring the winner thing up. How many rings you got? <laughs> he always throws that up yeah. at me. Man, if I had Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman, I would've won some too. You were... Now, I think we can all tell, you know, this was some lighthearted trash talk. They were definitely still friends here. Well, that was until a few years later, when Jordan took things too personally. See, by 2012, Jordan owned the Charlotte Hornets, and they had just finished a season with the worst record in NBA history, seven wins and 59 losses. So Barkley went on an ESPN radio show 
and criticized Jordan's ownership skill, saying, I love Michael, but he's just not done a good job. Even though he's one of my great friends, I can't get on here and tell you he's done a great job. And when Jordan heard this quote, he felt betrayed. How could a friend criticize him like that? So the next day, they spoke on the phone, and Jordan said he was so upset, he never wanted to hear from Barkley again. And it turns out, they haven't spoken since. Michael Jordan? Yes. How are you guys these days? Are you friends? Are you talking? Are you We're close? not friends right now, and I wish him nothing but the best. Are you hopeful that someday you guys will be close again? I would like that, but I, I'm not... I can't have people around me who, if I have to be honest about them, they're going to get mad at me. Damn. The disrespect just went too far, man. It sucks. But... At least Jordan's disrespect didn't cost Charles any money. Cause for Kimba Walker, he lost tens of millions of dollars, all thanks to Michael Jordan. Remember when I said the Charlotte Hornets were trash in 2011? Well, Jordan wanted to turn things around. So in the 2011 draft, he picked up Kemba Walker, hoping that he could turn the entire franchise around. And after just eight seasons, Kemba made three all-star teams, single-handedly brought them to the playoffs twice, and became the team's all-time leading scorer. He was doing everything he could to put Charlotte on the map. I mean, Jordan should have been thanking this man every night. So when Kemba's contract expired in 2018, you'd think that Jordan would have done everything he could to make sure the best player he's ever had stayed in Charlotte, right? Well, when the two sat down and tried to work out a deal, Jordan disrespected Kimba. Instead of paying him the $220 million that Kimba wanted, Jordan only offered him 160 mil. That's 60 million less than what he asked for. And Kimba was upset. He knew that without him, the Hornets were gonna be the laughing stock of the NBA. So with that, Kemba left immediately, and he let his agent know he wanted to play somewhere else. And just a few days later, he signed to the Boston Celtics for $140 million. Yeah, $20 million less than what Jordan offered. Kemba literally lost tens of millions of dollars just to spite Michael Jordan. But at least Kemba just walked away and didn't let things get out of hand. Because one time, a teammate tried to end Jordan's career because he was tired of all the disrespect. Back in 1988, Michael Jordan was still chasing his first NBA championship, and he was hoping to win it with his best friend, Charles Oakley. So when the Bulls ended up trading Oakley away, Jordan was furious and there was no one better for him to take his anger out on than the guy that replaced his friend, Bill Cartwright. It started at their very first practice together. Jordan started calling the dude old, saying that he sucked, he was always hurt. Things got so bad, Jordan gave Cartwright the nickname Medical Bill, and it didn't stop at name calling. During passing drills at practice, Jordan just kept whipping the ball at him, like, like they were playing dodgeball or something, and this, drove Cartwright to his breaking point. He was about to snap. One more sign of disrespect from Jordan, and he was gonna let him have it. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and it happened again. In a game against the Hornets, Cartwright had one of the worst nights of his career. So Jordan got up, and he told the entire team that Cartwright didn't belong in the NBA. And that was it. That was all Cartwright needed to hear. Cartwright gets Michael aside and he says, look, if you ever do anything like that again, you will never play basketball because I'm gonna break both your legs. All right, uh, just to put things into perspective a little bit, Bill Cartwright was seven foot one and 250 pounds. If he wanted to break Jordan's legs, he, he could have done it. And uh, I don't think Jordan would have won six rings with no legs. So, uh, that talk that they had, said Jordan straight. 
After that, he stopped the disrespect and they finally started getting along. I mean, in 1991, they even won their first of three titles together. So, uh, I guess that MJ trash talk ended up being a great thing for him. But not everyone can be so lucky. Sometimes, Jordan might say something so disrespectful, it'll end an entire career, like Muggsy Bogues. It was the 1995 playoffs, Hornets versus Bulls, and one more loss for Charlotte meant their season was over. So everyone thought the Hornets were done. Everyone except one player, Muggsy. Losing was not an option. This man is the shortest player in NBA history at just five foot three. You think he's gonna pass up a chance to beat Michael Jordan and win a championship? This man would go down as, as a legend. His career depended on this win. So in the fourth quarter of game four, with the game tied, Muggsy Bogues dribbled up the court. With just a few seconds left on the clock, Muggsy was getting ready to take the game winning shot. And that's when Michael Jordan stared Muggsy down and yelled, shoot it, you midget. Jesus, man. This man needs to chill a little bit. This isn't an Xbox 360 lobby. You can't be saying that. You're finna get me canceled just reading the quote. Damn. As if being the shortest player in NBA history isn't hard enough. You gotta deal with MJ doing stuff like that. But I, I guess the trash talking worked because Muggsy pulled up, took the shot, and missed it, losing the Hornets the game and the series. Muggsy's miss was the only thing he could think about. I mean, he even went on to tell Johnny Bott, a Bulls assistant coach, that this miss against Jordan was the one moment that ruined his career. And I mean, the stats back that up. Muggsy went from averaging 11 points a game to just five, and he was out of the NBA entirely by 2001. But I mean, uh, if you gotta look at the bright side, at least Muggsy didn't turn into a meme. Cause there's a lot of moments in the NBA that get memed to hell. Like, what is even going on in this picture? How, how does this even happen? Oh, you wanna hear more about that? Well then click on this video right here. These are the NBA moments that turned into memes. And trust me dog, you gotta see what happened to LaMelo. It's ridiculous. So what are you doing? This video's over, click it!